So the first process we will be conducting in this knowledge area will be to identify the stakeholders who we are going to analyze later on and we will engage and communicate with them. So this process is part of the stakeholders engagement knowledge area and it is a part of the first process group defining and aligning. It can be defined as the process of identifying the individuals, groups or organizations that may impact are impacted or are perceived to be impacted by the area under assessment. So simply it's the process of identifying the stakeholders. The key benefit of this process is that it helps determine whose interests should be taken into account throughout the business analysis related activities. And it is part of the defining and aligning process groups. The inputs, tools, techniques, and outputs of this process are shown in the figure below. We will have three inputs, elicitation results, enterprise and business architectures, situation statement. We will have five tools and techniques, the brainstorming, the interviews, organizational charts, process flows, questionnaires and surveys, and one key output, which is the stakeholders register. Now the data flow diagram of this process as shown, we will have inputs from the identify problem or opportunity process, the situation statement, we will need also the elicitation results, the unconfirmed one as an output of the conduct elicitation process, the confirmed elicitation results as an output of the process confirm elicitation results, and from the organization or the enterprise, we will need the enterprise and business architectures, and the output will be stakeholder register, and it will be the input for the conduct stakeholder analysis process. Now, a stakeholder can be defined as an individual, group, or organization that may affect, be affected by or perceive itself to be affected by a decision, activity, or outcome of a portfolio, program, or project. In business analysis, a stakeholder is an individual, group, or organization that may affect, be affected by, or perceive itself to be affected by the solution Therefore, these individuals and organizations can be termed as the product stakeholders. From the business analysis perspective, you will be only focusing on the product stakeholders. From a project management perspective, you will be focusing on the project stakeholders. Product stakeholders participate in the discovery of requirements and contribute in requirements elicitation by sharing the business analysis information from which product requirements are eventually formed. Product teams will use the definition of product scope and analysis results produced as the solution evolves to make adjustments to the stakeholders list or the stakeholders register. Because stakeholders identification is performed as part of the business analysis and portfolio, program and project management, there is a potential for much overlap in this effort the overlap will be between the business analyst and the project manager now what are the inputs we will need for this process starting with the elicitation results which consist of the business analysis information obtained from completed elicitation activities we will have another knowledge area known as the elicitation the results of the elicitation will be an input for this process at any point in time Unconfirmed and confirmed elicitation results are available as a source of data for identifying the product stakeholders. Through analysis and continued collaboration, the elicitation results used to identify stakeholders can transition from unconfirmed to confirmed, demonstrating the iterative nature of elicitation and analysis within business analysis. Now, the second input will be the enterprise and business architectures, which are a collection of the business and technology components needed to operate an organization or an enterprise, including the business functions, organizational structures, locations, and processes. Enterprise and business architectures often contain models and textual descriptions about roles throughout the organization, this information can be utilized as a source for identifying the product stakeholders. Architecture models can be shared with stakeholders, which may help the participants recall missing stakeholders that need to be added to the stakeholder 
register. So the enterprise and business architectures and the architectural models can be used in order to identify any missing stakeholders. The third input will be the situation statement, which is an output of the identify problem or opportunity process, which was discussed in the previous section. It provides an objective statement about the problem or opportunity the business is looking to address along with the effect and impact the situation is having on the organization. This context is required for determining the scope boundary to guide which stakeholders to include in this process in the stakeholders register. Now, we will have five tools and techniques to use in this process, starting with the brainstorming technique, which can be defined as an elicitation technique that can be used to identify a list of ideas in a short period of time. This ideas can be list of risks. This is why it's used in the identify product risks process, the identify list of stakeholders or potential solution options. Brainstorming is comprised of two parts. The first part is the idea generation, and the second part will be the analysis. The analysis is conducted to turn the initial list, which usually a long list of ideas, into a usable form of information. Brainstorming can be used during stakeholder identification to build the initial list of the stakeholders' names. The second tool will be conducting interviews in a formal or informal approach in order to elicit information from the stakeholders. Interviews can be conducted with stakeholders such as sponsor or functional or operational managers in order to identify the list of stakeholders who will be involved in one or more aspects of the business analysis effort. The third tool will be the organizational charts, models that depict the reporting structure within an organization or within a part of an organization. And these models can be reviewed to facilitate the discovery of stakeholder groups or individuals who may be impacted by or have a potential impact on the solution under analysis. So imagine yourself as the business analyst, just by looking at the organization structure, this will help you identify the stakeholders. Based on the size of the organization and how the organizational charts are being used across the business analysis effort, the business analyst determines whether it makes sense to take the role organizational chart down to the individual stakeholder level. The ultimate goal when reviewing organizational charts is to uncover all the stakeholders who will have needs that will have to be met by the solution and they might have requirements to provide. Another technique will be the process flows, which is a visual technique used to document visually the steps or tasks that people perform in their jobs or when they interact with a product. The process flows is one of the most popular tools or techniques used in the project management industry as well. It will visually document the steps you need to take while performing a specific job. These models are typically well understood by business stakeholders, so they make for a great tool to facilitate discussions around missing stakeholders or to validate a stakeholder register that has already been started. And this is the benefit of using the process flows. It is popular, so the majority of the business stakeholders will be aware of this tool. When identifying the stakeholders, the discussion can be focused on understanding the roles responsible for performing existing processes or roles that interact with the outputs produced from these processes. Process flows can be constructed to envision the future state and any new stakeholders can then be identified by reviewing how work will be performed in the future. We will discuss the process flows in detail in the analysis section of this course. Now, the last tool will be questionnaires and surveys, which can be defined as written sets of questions designed to quickly accumulate information from a large number of respondents. Surveys can be used to collect information to establish or maintain a stakeholder's list. Now, the key output of this process will be the stakeholder's register or the product stakeholder's register. In project management, the stakeholder register can be defined as a project document that includes the identification, assessment, and classification of project stakeholders. In business analysis, any individual group or organization that may affect be affected by 
or be perceived to be affected by the proposed or intended solution is added to the stakeholder register. Now, this is an example of the stakeholder register, how you are going to document the role, the contact, the category, the interest level, the influence level, the expectations, and the requirements. This is only an example of the stakeholders register. Now, tailoring considerations when it comes to the identify stakeholders process. In both life cycles, it is known as the identify stakeholders. The approach in an adaptive environment, stakeholders are identified during initial planning, often using brainstorming and can be revisited at any point throughout the adaptive life cycle as stakeholders are discovered. While in a predictive life cycle list of stakeholders is identified during business analysis planning and can be revisited or revised if the product scope changes or elicitation and analysis activities identify new stakeholders the deliverables in an adaptive environment might be a list of stakeholders noted in lightweight documentation or models may just involve brainstorm results usually in an agile environment or in an adaptive environment the outputs are in lightweight in less formality while in a predictive life cycle the output will be a stakeholder register it may require the use of an approved stakeholder register template which you can find usually in the organizational process assets the collaboration in this process the enterprise and business architects model aspects of the organization including information pertaining to internal human resources and supporting external people resources that have relationships to the enterprise architects may be able to share models depicting current organizational units roles and skills to augment stakeholder identification activities